Thank you. Uh, <clears throat> Aloha. Uh, all right. Okay. Uh, thank you for the introduction. Uh, I'm Morihiro Sato uh, from Kyoto, Japan, and uh, I. And today's talk is gonna be like. Uh, I mean, uh, I and John uh, went to Mexico City two years, no, not three years ago, I think. Uh, for the AAS in Mexico. So then I did a presentation on EA memorial photography then. And then I, I, when he says, uh, you're gonna present something, you're gonna do a, a lecture. So I just said, oh, okay, I, I'm gonna use that, that. And I found out yesterday, it's just 15 minutes, <laughs> 15 minutes long. So I, packed many stuff from that uh, material, especially for those who are not familiar with the uh, theories like semiotics, semiotics and uh, the uh, application of semiotic theory to analyze images like photography and that kind of things. And uh, maybe, so basically it's uh, history and theory of photography, but more like a cultural semiotics or image anthropology. Uh, may, you may not familiar with that term. It's more like uh, European version of visual culture studies, uh, anthropology of image and also visual culture. And also, of course, uh, today's talk, is deeply uh, connected with the material existence of images. And I uh, prepared QR code. So uh, you can uh, use your smartphone right now and you can screenshot uh, the Zoom over there. So you will see the bibliography a basic bibliography of your talk. Oh, please, <laughs> if you have it. And so, and on the top of that, uh, you will see the, my, my essay in English about memorial photography, which appeared a long time ago, 2002, Thousand or 2009 in the magazine called Impressions, uh, published by uh, Japanese Art Society of America. And the library has it. So please check it on the volume uh, number 30. So everyone did that? Okay. Okay. And let me introduce. Uh, it kind of somewhat related to the main topic of today. And this is a photograph, photographic work by a photographer called Iwane, Ai, Ai Iwane. Maybe some of you uh, may heard of her because her uh, works are exhibited in last year to, 2022 Triennale, uh, Hawaii Triennale. And it's called Kipka. Kipka is Hawaiian word, right? Somewhat uh, related with lava and the volcano kind of stuff. And I was shocked. Uh, actually, I saw this panorama uh, photo last year in Kyoto uh, called photo festival called Kyotography. And I was kind of shocked. Uh, because this is a uh, Japanese graveyard, Japanese style graveyard in Hawaii, and which uh, was kind of destroyed by the volcano Kilauea two or three years ago. And uh, th this uh, existence uh, is uh, really a kind of motivation to uh, Iwane came here and shoot some 
many photos like bone dance in Hawaii and the graveyard in Hawaii. And when she heard this news, she came here to show that. And the graveyard, good and gravestone especially, is a kind of signifier. It signifies that dead, that uh, the dead already uh, he uh, someone who died many years ago and many generations right, uh, before. And uh, it, it signifies the death, but it was destroyed by uh, the rubber like this. And uh, it's kind of somewhat very sad, but also very sublime kind of uh, landscape uh, in monochrome, of course. Uh, but so maybe the, what the graveyard somewhat destroyed, well, not this one, but somewhat destroyed and sunk in the rubber. But uh, the photograph of it might be the meta signifier for that uh, grave yard. So, and it, it can be a kind of double signifier for the dead. Mm. And this photo on the top of lava, there is one plant. Uh, is growing out of the somewhat from the death of the life. Maybe it's, I'm really impressed by this. Anyway, uh, today's talk is also uh, on uh, somewhat uh, related to the photography and death and memory and trace uh, some such kind of stuff. Uh, this is the uh, three more four years ago, the death of Japanese actress uh, called Kiki Kirin uh, died and uh, passed away. And there is a fun funeral and really big uh, picture of her uh, is presented. <clears throat> The Jap uh, Japanese word for ie or have been praying, uh, no, no, no um, yeah, in modern Japan, memorial photographs have been playing an important role in funerals, memorial services, and everyday lives of the bereaved. The Japanese word ie can be translated as memorial image or literally remained, remained, or oh, remained shadow. Uh, I'm not sure which translation is suitable, memorial images or uh, mourning images. Uh, the literal translation uh, is my remained shadow. Or I can paraphrase the trace of the absent. Actually, so, so, so. actually uh, this gravestone is actually, it's the trace of the absent, trace of the dead. And the representation of the dead means trace of the absent. It shows there is no living person. So, in, in that sense, uh, this gravestone and EA, uh, memorial images, memorial photography, uh, plays same kind of role. The world but itself didn't appear in the published books until 1960s. So it is more recent world. It might be. There's, uh, I, I um, this, but this presentation is not much so uh, 
historical one more than the theoretical one. So it doesn't matter it's old or not. Let's say, uh, but the same kind of things, same kind of image playing the real, uh, playing the same kind of role. Uh, let's say in Mexican culture, the photography plays important role uh, for the deceased. Uh, at the altar of Dia de Muertos, Muertos, Day of the Dead, there is a photography. And actually, I have known about the Day of the Dead long before, but it, I, it, I really don't know that uh, in detail. But in animation film called Coco, there in that film, uh, the photograph, phot photographs of the dead. It uh, is uh, playing real, real uh, important role. In the film, photographs of the deceased, uh, uh, deceased uh, plays a uh, crucial role to communicate between the world of the living and the world of the dead. I don't know that the belief uh, is fictional or not. And in Mexico, Mexico, or ah, uh, I will show it to you later. Uh, the, uh, I will show you the photo sculpture of the Mexico later. Uh, this is a pair of images. Uh, is uh, uh, the central object of discussion in this uh, lecture. Actually, I acquired a couple of hanging scrolls and an auction maybe 10 or 15 years ago, not so expensive. Uh, I don't know who painted this. Uh, on the box was written the portraits of the restorer of Nishikawa, Nishikawa family. And the elder man and the woman in their formal kimono are, de are depicted. At the same time, I, uh, I mean, in the same box, I got some card to visit, small card, small name card kind of stuff. And uh, uh, card to visit, uh, and the Umbro types, glass photo, as I said, uh, I found the name of the famous photo studio in Kyoto uh, in the 19th century on the Mount of Cart de, Cart de Visit. And uh, so Nishikawa family must have been a merchant who lives in Kyoto. Also, there was a couple of glass negatives of the elder couple, which are almost identical with the figures in the painting. I tried to superimpose uh, the, uh, the painting with the glass negatives. Uh, actually, this is, I mean, inverted. The uh, real regards negatives are like uh, inverted image and in black and white. Uh, black, right. Some pa paintings based on photographic images like this can be found from late Tokuga period to earlier Meiji. According to Kinoshita Naoyuki, a renowned painter in the 19th, 19th century, Goseda Horyu, uh, had a studio and sold photograph-like uh, paintings uh, for the foreign visitors uh, and the Japanese as a souvenir uh, for Yokohama. He called them as shashinga or photo paintings. It is said that he painted the realistic portraits of the foreigners based on his or her uh, photography, combining them with the ready-made costume paintings like this, ready, kind of, kind of ready-made uh, paintings. In Kyoto, uh, 
yeah, kind of renowned uh, painter of the time, Tamura Soryu, also uh, painted uh, this kind of shashinga. Uh, This one, okay. The portraits of the restorer of uh, Nishika family. Uh, Nishikawa ke chukou no zo. Yeah. Mm. Uh, sorry. Okay, can be placed in the lineage of, ta of the Tamura Soryu school. Uh, but in this presentation, such art historical issue will not be discussed. Rather, this presentation asks how such vernacular image object is received and functioned. The portraits of the restorers of Nishika family probably used as a memorial image. The pictures of a married, a married couple photographed during their lifetime become memorial images when the sitters passed away. And then the images being copied by a painter and became become a tool for the memorial service. These images resurrected again and again as object. And they recontextualized each time. We can say the images has lived several lives. So what is the memorial image? Broadly saying, a uh, memorial image is a photographic portrait uh, or a photograph-like portrait taken during the sitter's lifetime. And it transformed into a memorial photograph after his or her death. And the viewers, it's, I think it's, really important thing. The viewers uh, declare their affection or respect uh, to the sitter in the same manner. In other words, when a mere portrait turns to a memorial image, various kinds of rituals uh, kind of uh, rituals have to be taken place, which I called uh, maybe kind of coinage, realization, realization of a portrait, right? Kind of make it relic. The rituals include not only religious services, but the choice of frame, the place of enshrinement, and the manipulation of the image as well. These are the three conditions of memorial images and the three, line, three lines chronologically. Focusing on this realization, this presentation, this lecture theoretically and historically analyzes the function of memorial photography in modern Japan. Uh, somewhat comparing to broad example from other cultures, Europe, America, maybe, and Mexico, Brazil, India, and so on. Okay, so I would like to deal with some general characteristics of the photographic portraiture. The most basic function, function of photo, uh, portraiture is a representational one. Consequently, the resemblance of the image to its sitter is the most fundamental function for portraiture. In the case of painting or sculpture or anything like man-made objects, you need some kind of evidence that the image is as somewhat resembles or somewhat same as the, the model, right? Because paintings and sculptures was made by human hand. 
the so the evidence of the authenticity uh, is frequently represented outside of the image, such as captions, narratives, stories, or uh, explains panels, such kind of things. On the contrary, in the case of photography, the, authentic the authenticity of the image is believed to be already guaranteed. The basic lies in the indexical nature of photography. Charles Sanders Pass, who Pass, I always pronounce it P.S., but pronounced like Pass, I forgot over the spelling of this guy. But Charles Sanders Pass, one of the originator of the theory or discipline called semiotics. The other one is very another one, very famous French, uh, no, 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 Swiss uh, linguist called Ferdinand de Saussure. But I, uh, and that uh, actually de Saussure's uh, theory is called semiology in France, especially. And semiotics, plus uh, semiotics, and he is a philosopher and a mathematician, and American philosopher and a mathematician, and he called his theory called semiotics. And uh, one, no, and he actually liked to classify everything into three, like first, se second, third kind of character. And in, and he classified uh, uh, and the social, the, the social it was the linguist. So he only uh, dealt with language. But Pars, in the case of Pars, he dealt with anything as science. Let's say uh, like uh, this one, right? Uh, like the trace of someone's foot is sign, or smoke, or over the mountain is a sign for some mountain fire. Such kind of things, and he puts uh, that into three. One is icon, iconic sign. Iconic sign is based on the theory of similarity, resemblance. Uh, so basically the painting or manga or illustration are basically icons, you know, uh, from the name icons. And index, which is kind of uh, mm, somewhat complex, but it's based on the physical connection. So, if someone walks on the beach, there will be a trace of his or her feet. This is a sign. This is an indexical sign. A mountain fire is also the indexical sign because it's caused by physical. And so these two are very connected to the, the reference what is referred by that sign. Uh, semioticians call them kind of motivated sign. But symbol, it's a little bit different. Symbol was based, symbol based on convention, rule, law, or something like that. So this sign does not resemble to its function, does not uh, have, doesn't have any physical connection to that on off of computer or something like that. It's a symbol. And basically the language is symbol. There is no, uh, necessary connection between the sound dog 
and that animal, the small animal. So if the language system changes, the word changes, like in French, chan, in Japanese, inu, it's no connection between that. Uh, the, those sounds, sound and the sound and meaning connect arbitrarily. This is not pass, it's, this is what social said. Anyway, those are symbols. But there in the language, there is some kind of iconic sign, like onomatopoeia. The dog barks bow wow. It's somewhat resembled to real dogs barking. But if language changes, it changes. In Japanese, it's called wan wan. Wan wan and bow wow a little bit there is some kind of resemblance, but changes. So anyway, uh, same, so in that case, symbol, uh, symbol and the icon kind of live together in the same sign. And also index, there is an index in language. This is the index finger, right? Index means physical connection. So this, that, there, here, it's kind of indexical language. It, the reference changes depending on the context, right? So index. Yeah. Then let's get back to photography. Uh, I read this again. Paintings and sculptures yeah, are usually categorized in the class of icon. Photographs can be iconic because uh, they resemble to their references. Reference. Still, photographs can be also regarded as index card sign at the same time. This is caused by the technical nature of photography. That is visible light reflected from some kind of object causes a chemical change uh, in the case of analog photography, chemical change to, the, to a light sensitive surface. In this respect, a photograph is a trace of sub substantive object by the mediation of light. And the, the, uh, the, this is the quote from uh, Pars. Photographs, especially instantaneous photographs, are very instructive. Uh, instructive to e explain the mixture of classes, I mean, I think. And because we know that they are in certain respects exactly like the object they represent icon. But this resemblance is due to the photographs having been produced under such circumstances that they were physically forced to correspond point by point to nature. You know, by the mediation of light. In that aspect then, they belong to the second class, which is index, index card child. So index card nature of photographs, it's really different from painting and sculpture and animation, that kind of stuff, right? So this symbiosis of the iconic and the index card makes the authenticity of photography so strong. Uh, this is the excerpt from Roland Barthes, Camera Lucida, very famous. Uh, his uh, essay or somewhat kind of romance novel, maybe kind of prose. Uh, 
for photography. And he says, uh, photography is like the child is pointing his finger at something, his finger at something and say that there it is low. It's just like finger pointing kind of uh, language function. A photograph cannot be transformed philosophically. You mean they, they can, I mean, we transform everything philosophically, which means in language, you know, there's a whiteboard. I mean, we divide whiteboard, desk, computers, water, but photograph, photography, I don't know, camera can't. Camera only understand the world as the strength of light, right? So it's so um, continuous, maybe. In that sense, camera is very analog, but our way of thinking is very digital. You know, digital means uh, this, uh, digital means the one, two, three, right? Nanti uh, undatake. I forgot to visandio. It's it's called. Uh, I forgot. Uh, discrete, so yeah, discrete number. But analog is continuous. And maybe I, I heard from the psychoanalytics, like Jack Lacan says, the uh, sense of babies are very continuous and they can divide their things they can divide him or himself or herself from their mother. I don't know. It's, he is, he is not, he or her is not separated from the world. It's continuous, like I said. After they learn language, the world is divided. So photographs is like a baby, right? So what maybe this is what we say, uh, uh, doing. Show your photographs to someone, he will immediately show you his, look, this is my, look this. These are all index card sign, index card usage or language. So this is the basis of uh, Barthes. Uh, but actually, Barthes didn't uh, mention anything on Carl's theory, uh, despite Carl's, uh, I mean, uh, yeah, uh, Barthes should have known Carl's, but never mentioned. But it's sem somewhat, uh, resembles. Oh, of course, some some theorist says uh, parse and versus are fundamentally different. Right, like uh, the film critic called Tom Gunning. Uh, is, but, but anyway, it's uh, so, somewhat uh, resembles. So very very famous word is that has been. Every photograph commonly says that has been. The photograph can be portrait, can be landscape, can be uh, ID card, anyway, anything can, the, all the things said that, because camera does not understand it's, oh, oh okay, <laughs> okay, <laughs> human word. Anyway, but that has been. Uh, anyway, uh, it's good to know. Uh, please read Camera Lucida. You can't 
understand at all at first, like me. But uh, very, very beautiful words. And there's some uh, problem in translation in English. Uh, but anyway, it's really a uh, good thing. So that, that is the nature of photographic world. world. So you can, uh, but there, I, I'm going to make it short. This is uh, the word from French film critic, Andre Bazin, uh, who support, supported a uh, new wave cinema, uh, like Jean-Luc Godard uh, or that kind of stuff. And here, one should really examine the psychology of relics uh, and souvenirs, souvenirs, which means kind of uh, memorable things, right? Which likewise enjoy the advantage of transfer of reality. I mean, he, uh, before this uh, passage, he uh, says photography is uh, photography transfers reality from outer world to inner world. Then, so it's the same as relics, some kind of Christian relics and mummy complex. And the, I think the holy shroud of Turing uh, combines the features alike relic and the photograph, which is very important. I, I said the photo uh, paintings is totally different from photography, but some kind of painting or drawings are somewhat resembles uh, features of photography. One of which is, oh, of course it's myth, but there are many myths about Christ's face was transferred onto some Clothes. The oldest myth is called akeropoietos. It's a Greek word, means not made by human hand. Akeropoietos. It's called our, uh, I'm so sorry, mandilion. Mandilion, it's called mandilion. And mandilion is uh, from the uh, myth that uh, his face, Christ's face, Jesus' face, uh, and one king, one Syrian king, uh, is got ill, and he asked Christ to come to Syria, Edessa, Syria, but uh, Christ can't go, very busy, I think, at that time, uh, miracles, too many miracles, and so he put the handkerchief on his face and they're transferred, copied, their faces copied on that uh, cloth. And he sent it to the king and king's ear is totally cured by touching that, uh, the cloth. So, so-called Russian icon is all Mandelion if the body is not painted, this kind of. This is a copy, mindless, no creation, no artistic, no art, no artistic imagination, just copy, 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 the monks copy. It's the, the same kind of magic or uh, which uh, Madirion had. This is a, uh, and ma many, many critics, many theorists says this is the origin of photographs, photography. Uh, like uh, mm, James George Fraser, very, very, very old uh, 1920s uh, anthropologist, and he uh, divide the uh, magic into two. One is homo 
opa, fake, magic, love, similarity. I mean, put magic with his likeness. Or you can burn someone's hair, someone's beard. It can, uh, by it, you can spare on, you put spare on it. It's contagious magic. It's like icon and index, right? So photographs can be some kind of magical one, being very modern technological things, you know, for, for that. But even you can protect your iPhone with this image. This image is based on the uh, kind of, uh, I forgot the word, kind of manifestation of Christ in the dream of a girl and copied it. So it has some kind of magical power. So, and the death mask, this image, this image object has the same uh, as photography. And you put some uh, kind of plaster on the face of the dead, you can copy the face in inside out, right? like it's a negative, negative of photography. And if you cast bronze with that uh, mold, you can make the face of Nietzsche, face of Beethoven. Um, I'm gonna switch. But uh, this is the uh, copy of makeup of Kabuki actor. After the uh, after they played uh, a role of maybe Shibaraku uh, on the stage, he put he he copied he transferred his own makeup to uh, some. Uh, kind of paper or cloth and give it to customers, sponsors. And it has come some kind of, and then uh, anyway, these instances are the uh, mm, kind of change visual stuff into tactical stuff and tactical stuff into visual stuff. Kind of relay of senses occur. Mm, I'll skip this. But anyway, you need to put, I mean, there is many, many images. I, let's say for me, like me, I have many images of me on the Facebook or Twitter. If you can uh, search me, there's many things. And many, uh, each of them can be my memorial image. But only one or two, maybe only one can be. So you need to decide one from many images. So in Japan, before the funeral, really, really, really uh, important thing is select the pictures. Select a picture from pictures. Enormous amount. But it can be a kind of ritual to seize uh, or uh, tranquil the mind. But it's ritual. So this is the third uh, feature and really ritualization or no, no, realization. Uh, so uh, anyway, uh, to summarize, I put, I think uh, the painting or copy of painting from photography is like a, a kind of realization. And there is a many kind of pseudo, pseudo photo kind of stuff 
from this uh, Vietnam called Den Xin Ye. I don't know, I don't know Vietnamese, but maybe True and Tang mean Den Xin Ye. It's from small ID card and the artisan enlarges the image, it becomes the memorial image. And this is not a memorial image, but the image of Emperor Meiji had very, very strong uh, power to the nation. Uh, let me read this. I mean, this is very, uh, uh, very important uh, part. So, Yes. Ah, this is Goshinye. In order to consider the memorial photographies rituals, Goshinye or uh, the portrait of Emperor Meiji will be a good example, even if it is a portrait of living person. As Taki Koji illustrated, the portrait was originally drawn by Eduardo Kiyosone, uh, who was employed as a Ministry of Finance as a master of portraiture, Italian. Yeah. The mass produced image were distributed, uh, then the mass reproduced images were distributed to every elementary and middle school in Japan and its colonies as a symbol of the unification of the newly nation state. It was treated respectfully as if it were uh, the emperor himself, not a representation. It, it's not a representation, it's emperor. The words for, verbs for this image was exactly the same as a living emperor, uh, that was to living emperor. Uh, so it was treated respectfully as if it were the, um, the emperor himself. It was depicted so realistically with photographic glossy surface and no one was allowed to look straight at the image in the special dark room. Everybody believed that is a real photograph of the emperor. It was not only called Goshinye or imperial portrait, but also Oshashin or the imperial photograph, which shows that hand-drawn images were understood as photographs by that Goshinye has an indexical relationship with the emperor, even if uh, it uh, exists or not. So I, I think this kind of, this is from Brazil, this is from India, this kind of painted image, which has the uh, both uh, characteristics as icons and indexes has so it's some kind of rituals because you can get as, as many photographs as possible, like print. That is a power for power of photography, but maybe they made it for photography for the worship. So they paint. They can erase the, even they can erase the, uh, trace for photography. These are called vernacular photographies. Uh, I'm gonna show you some of them. So we, and in the theory of photography, photography or history of photography, kind, this kind of vernacular photograph uh, studies are really uh, in fashion, but uh, uh, maybe more than but 20 years. Vernacular means a direct dialectica, a dialectal, regional 
anonymous amateur out of commercial market. So it's everyday banal photos, no artistic quality, no aesthetic quality, no use for historical document, but it serves some kind of function. For school photos, uh, it's really, uh, really interesting book by Persian Spitzer. Uh, say it's a, a really interesting book on school photos. And it's uh, to think about what school pictures do. This is why we uh, study vernacular photography like uh, spiritual photo, like you, can you see Rinkan? Rinkan here, and this the widow of Rinkan, and photo jewelry with uh, embroidered hair. A school photo, Japanese photo sticker, but all of them has kind of physical substance, which makes kind of affective if the affective impulse to the body of the uh, viewer. Memorial photography is one of that uh, vernacular images, uh, like photo escultura, photo sculpture in Mexico. So it's some painting and kind of bar relief sculpture. Uh, kind of mixture of hybridity of images. And uh, these kind of things. Uh, so photography, not just the image, just not two dimensional image. Photographs uh, as uh, object, image. So we call it image object. So uh, this kind of stuff is not only for the visual culture, but also material culture stuff. It's really uh, interesting thing. Uh, actually, I prepared to uh, do the, my forthcoming uh, essay, but I, I'm gonna show you those images. I'm now uh, thinking of the color photography. Colorizing is somewhat, uh, it's uh, the way, in which the same as in a kind of painting or some kind of things. This uh, is now going on in Kyoto. Uh, this, uh, it, maybe uh, this is the explanation, color slides, because many of you didn't know. Uh, but one collector in Osaka uh, bought many, many slides on eBay. Uh, because these images are not taken by Japanese. Uh, it's 1945 to 1952, which means occupation area. And American soldiers and GIs took this photo and brought it home. And maybe the descendants sold it on eBay. So you can, I uh, mean, he can he could get as many images in colorful images. It's not AI stuff, it's Kodachrome kind of stuff. So, you know, GI is like a uh, Navy and Army. And we, I, I, I'm, the, I'm the part of this project and wrote some essays and um, by doing this, what and the kind of issue of what is a color in photography. And actually I wrote, finished writing this uh, essay just, just before I come, came here, but I have no time to explain this, but this is the son of a family who lived in Nanzenji area. Totally different hairstyle, totally different clothing. So, okay. Well, I am now more like, uh, like hunting the daguerreotype. 
unpainted tin type. This Indian stuff and Yokohama stuff. I think these are the like kind of mixed media of painting and photography, mixed media between craft and photography, like photo jewelry. And so Kodachrome kind of characterize, I think this is a mixed media between movie and photography. Okay, maybe it's time to finish. Stop. Thank you.